And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, where we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture each and every week, twice a week, wherever you get your podcast. Melinda and I are on this week's show on Friday for your weekend pleasure, talking about Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, the future of Star Trek, as we always like to go ahead and talk about Star Trek each and every time out that when we get a chance because she's such a huge Trekkie fan. And I, you know what? I guess I could say I am as well. Plus, we talk about the shows you need to catch, including the one that you're not watching. I know you've not been watching, but you have got to catch. We tell you what those TV shows are, so go ahead and check it out today, the Pop Culture Cosmos. Plus also as well, Joe Sorrow. Hopefully he, oh, he said the nightcap will be at 8.30 tonight. I tried to go ahead and do it a little bit sooner, but he looks like he wants to schedule it for 8.30 this evening. You can catch him normally at, of course, Ox1947 at LakersBall.com. Go ahead and make sure you check him out there. Plus also as well, his company, Symblades. Symblades with a Y.com. And again, he will be hosting the nightcap at 8.30. I'm updating it as we speak per his request. He will be on at 8.30 for you right there for the Lakers nightcap indeed. I will not be on for two hours. So I'm sorry about that. There will be a little bit of a gap tonight, but... Cool, bro. What's going on? Xbox, uh, hit the likes out there. Please like, share, subscribe, follow, or do whatever you can. You can go ahead and support us. It is truly appreciated. Also, as well, if you could subscribe today to get the latest notifications, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us wherever you're at, even on Twitch, please. It is greatly appreciated. Plus, also, as well, of course, make sure if you're listening on to us on audio, for all those great audio listeners out there, that five-star review, wherever you get your podcast, plus our good friends, of course, John Costa, who I hope will join us this evening. He is the guy behind Clutch Talk and Lakers Corner. Go ahead and check out his channels. Empire Jeff TV, he stopped by. His great stuff that he's doing on his channel. Lakers and Five is always somewhere around these Lakers channels, so it's always great to have him here. And with the big, huge support that we are getting right now, please go ahead and check out John McCainley's channel, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights, yo, and everything that we do right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast as well. With the Lakers Friday night coming in with a five-game winning streak, could they go ahead and get the thing done tonight against the Indiana Pacers and in a game where they could have they beat them in the IST in Vegas? They beat them last week. In Los Angeles, they unfortunately could not follow up three games in four nights, including a double overtime, seemed to have taxed the Lakers. They did look fatigued throughout. And Joe said it, if there was any game on the schedule on the six-game road trip to look out for, it was tonight. Indiana was looking for some revenge, and they got it tonight as the Lakers. Absolutely terrible for beyond the arc, 16.7%. Turnovers, they had 16 with LeBron and Austin Reeves having five turnovers apiece. Everybody seemed to not have a full handle on today, and it just looked a step slow. The energy wasn't there outside of Austin Reeves at times, but even Austin that second half started to fizzle out. And the Lakers, unfortunately, their dreams of finishing the rest of the season, and Laker Tom's dreams, and Tyrone Church's dreams of finishing the season undefeated and getting the Lakers a 50-win season go awry as, the, unfortunately, the Pacers beat the Lakers 109-90. to And here today to discuss said Lakers game and the effort there, but mainly we'll focus on what's up ahead because, obviously, it's not too happy talking about what happened today. He's a good man indeed. He is fatigued himself, according to his byline. He's been working out hard. He says no. He's going to tell you no, 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 but you saw it out there. Clearly, they did not look like they had the legs today. It is Joe Soro. Joe, great to have you here as always. Packed house, over 100 people out there. Please like and subscribe. Follow us if you're on Facebook. This is the time to go ahead and catch what we're doing, Joe. Again, not a great performance by the Lakers, but there's still hope on the horizon to finish out this road trip strong, Joe. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it, it's, it was showing itself in the first quarter. Every shot seemed to uh, hit, tear sure. him off. 
yeah, everything was short. And it was it was one of those and the, the the Pacers opened up a chance for them to make a run or to maybe get a lead. But unfortunately, the Lakers just could not make shots. The Lakers might have been able to had they hit at least a little bit from three, they might have been able to get a six, seven, eight point lead and then maybe muster enough energy in the second half to either stay stay even or maybe just kind of keep it close so that they can win at the end. But they just couldn't make any shots in the beginning. And second quarter even, I was surprised that Indiana wasn't really uh, Indiana. Indiana usually can drop, what is it, 123 points uh, a game? Yes. Uh, so they had a chance. They, had, they were given a chance. Unfortunately, their legs looked like they couldn't move. They were half a step slow. Their shot was off. Their shot was short. LeBron was jumping in the air when he probably should have been running. It just it just looked like a typical February game, January game, March game, where you're in the middle of nowhere in Indiana and you're just like, I can't, I I'm I can't do it. I can't do it tonight. <laughs> no, but it was a game again. It was you something you pointed out that if there was any game that there probably would be a definite loss or more likely loss, it was Indiana. You could tell not only because the fact that they were going to be motivated heading into today because they've lost already twice to the Lakers this season, but just the fact of where it sits on the six game road trip, especially coming off a double overtime victory in Milwaukee. And then the next day against Memphis, it wasn't asking to be something where it was going to be an energetic game for the Lakers. The Lakers were going to have to gut this out one way or the other. It, it, the way it played out wasn't the way I thought it would play out. Indiana didn't play well tonight. No. They didn't play the way they usually play. But the Lakers played worse than I thought they played. <laughs> I knew they wouldn't play as well. Just because they're just tired, they're they're beat up, but they played worse, and it just was one of those things where it just went the way it went. These kind of games are normal. They they these games are normal. These things happen. It just it's unfortunate for the Lakers because that they, they they're in a position that they're in. If they were fifty two, if they had fifty two wins right now, this would probably be, we wouldn't even be talking negative. Like, well, we knew this was going to be a loss and just keep doing what you're doing. Stay in the fourth seed, fifth seed, and you'll be fine. But in this case, every loss is bad no matter how understanding it is. This was an understandable loss due to the fact that they're just not they, – they just couldn't – they just couldn't move. They couldn't muster on uh, muster up 48 minutes of, of basketball to the point where they could make a make a run and and be effective. And this 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 team is as far as Delo's three goes, guys. If Delo doesn't hit his threes, you this team is toast. They have absolutely no shot. At least with Austin Reeves, you know he was a rebounding machine tonight. Uh, if he's not hitting his shots, he has other ways of of commu- of uh, contributing. Delo actually does have a, the knack of, of of getting his his assists up when his when a shot is not going. But he couldn't really do that either. I mean, he did have five assists, but. It just was not a good game. It wasn't a good game from any of the guards. I think they shot uh, ten for thirty. Uh, ten for thirty. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. they needed to shoot probably. Well, let's let's talk. Let's let's say let's say if they hit five more shots and three of them are threes. Let's let's do the math. That's nine plus four. That's thirteen points. They lost by nineteen, but a lot of that was because they kind of gave up. So even if they had shot a little bit okay. They or, get to 30%. Yeah, even if, if they had shot uh, a little bit better, just five more shots made, uh, they they probably take, take the game. But then again, we're never going to know. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Soro along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much again for watching, listening. Truly appreciate it. The Lakers do lose 109 to 90. They're now... 41 and 33. They're still ninth place in the Western Conference, but with the victory tonight for Golden State, 
Let me go ahead and get everybody an update on what's going on there in the standings. The Lakers, again, ninth place in the Western Conference, but they are now down to two games. Uh, excuse me, two games ahead. Excuse me, no, they are one game, one and a half games be uh, in front of the Golden State Warriors. They're one and a half games in front of the Warriors. They're still two games back as of now. The Kings and Mavericks are still playing. So are the Suns. So they're two to two and a half games back behind those teams. They're one and a half games ahead of the Warriors. Only one game ahead in the loss column, Joe. Houston is breathing down our necks as well. Man, the Lakers need to go ahead and finish out whatever they have left ahead of them on this road trip just to make sure that they don't fall into Golden State or Houston's trap. I know they couldn't have taken AD and LeBron out too early because they still had a shot, but they did play a lot of minutes tonight. I, if they should, had, have, should have sat them down with about four to go. It didn't, it didn't work out. It just didn't work out. It was just a bad game overall. And if they finish five and one on the road trip, it's a massive win. And they're playing three teams that I think are total of negative 86 in terms yep. of record. It is three games here to get out of this last road trip, extended road trip. You do that, and I don't think anybody's going to balk at a 5 and one record no then you have three games at home and then two to finish off the the season i'm i'm gonna take a wild guess that probably by that last home game against golden state they're probably gonna know where they're gonna be seated if they do should they don't look for ad and lebron to be playing those last two games they're not gonna go fly to memphis maybe they might fly to memphis maybe maybe they might go to new orleans as a support system but uh but they're not gonna be playing and that's what I'm looking at right now. Are they going to at least solidify the ninth seed uh, to the point where they don't have to play nine and uh, the, the, the 81 and 82? That's kind of what I'm waiting on there. So with the team heading to Brooklyn on Sunday, Joe, uh, the news came out yesterday by Sham Sharania that Gabe Vincent, he did rejoin the team on the trip. And there's a slight possibility that he will play or get, at least be available to play on Sunday in Brooklyn. While I'm not expecting, like you're not expecting anything now, Brooklyn, he can get some minutes against some pretty bad teams going forward, at least the next three games. Should you give him some burn, what kind of help may he be possibly by the end of the season? Well, if you're going to compare it to the bench now, uh, Lakers bench scored a total of, what is it, uh, seven, 14 points? Yeah. They and, had 29. And at Cam least Reddish. In my, in uh, Memphis. I, I don't know what's going on with Cam Reddish, but Cam Reddish looks as fried as a, as a pancake. Bad. It's just not, it's just not good. And that's a shame because he was really actually redeeming his career, uh, redeeming his career back in November, but it's all gone astray since then, Joe. Yeah, redeeming his career had to do more with his mental game. I think this time it's his physical inability to move. I don't think he can move. I think he's messed up. I think he's messed up physically, and it's messing him up, just not being able to put it together mentally as well. And that's that takes a certain person to be able to fight through those type of things. A lot of people... A lot of players don't have that intestinal fortitude. And again, I'm not trying to dog on on Cam Reddish. It's just what it is. He's injured. He's trying to maybe play through it, and it, it, he just can't. He can't be effective. And Cam Reddish, in general, is just deficient in so many areas in the NBA. Uh, attitude has a had, had something to do with it, but you can always have an attitude and have six skills, and and no, and people don't care. <laughs> but he's 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 just not. I don't I don't think he's. He's not a – it's looking like he's not really an NBA player, a game in and game out, 82 game a season type guy. So I don't know how much longer you can really play him. And as far as Gabe Vincent, Gabe Vincent, you're asking Gabe Vincent to play NBA basketball this late in the season when conditioning in the NBA, if you're out a week 
in November, December, January. Those guys take forever to kind of get back into it. So you're asking this guy to basically miss an entire season and then just come back a week before the season is about to, or a week and a half before the season starts to we wind down into into playoff mode. I don't I don't know how I don't know what to expect there, but it, it's probably going to be better than what we have now. Uh, I it, the bench is something we already know is not going to work. The Lakers are dependent on their starters. The starters don't play well. If Velo's not hitting his open shots, this team cannot win. And tonight was a really good example because Indiana did not play well. They didn't play well even at home. And they still lost, which means they're dead in the water if any mistakes happen. There is no margin of error at all with this team. They have to play. They have to play starters dropping 15 20 each that's that's the only way they have any chance to win if you can get some help from Torian Prince dropping maybe 10 and 12 Dinwiddie 10 and 12 cool if you get the bench to score 20 to 25 points with your starters averaging between the 5 20 there you go you have your uh 115 to 220 points whatever it is and maybe give yourself a shot there especially in the playoffs when things start to slow down a little bit once again, the Lakers do lose 109 to 90. It is Joe Sor along with me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Truly appreciate it. Don't forget at 8.30 tonight, Joe Sorrell, he'll be having a nightcap with you as he talks the Lakers over the weekend. Plus also as well, he may throw in a little bit Dodgers, maybe some NFL. Who knows what Joe has planned for the nightcap. Also as well, tomorrow at noon, the Laker Holic Spotlight. We'll be on the rest of the trip, so go ahead and check out what they have to say. Laker Tom, whose dreams are now shattered, Joe, because the Lakers did lose and his dream of the Lakers finishing the season undefeated is now over. At least that part of it, the winning the championship is still alive. But yes, it is the Lakers right now, still in ninth place in the Western Conference. I don't feel the heat just yet, Joe, but they are only one game ahead in the loss column, so... With three easy teams or three very beatable teams on the horizon, Joe, they need to get these three done just for the fact that they can go ahead and, you know, with some luck, provide that buffer against Golden State once again. We were hoping for four and two. Yes. Now we're now we have the position to be greedy and go, you have to you have to beat Brooklyn, Toronto, and Washington to go above that. They have a Good possibility of doing that, but they're going to need D'Angelo to hit his shots. And Austin Reeves is going to need to hit his shots as well. If those two don't hit their shots, it's just this team can't go anywhere. <laughs> There's no no shot at that point. LeBron uh, is progressively getting worse in terms of his physical ability. You can tell the foot is bothering him. AD is still in that, you know, prime mode he's still effective still getting rebounds still has the energy but he can't he can't hold the fort he can't guard three four guys at a time it's just not going to happen he uh, just looked like it's one of those days where he was just he looked tired old and he didn't have that lift like he normally did. no no one had the lift no one no one really had any energy tonight they looked like they had just come out of they looked like they were playing in denver on a back-to-back -back yeah. this late in the season it's it's just what it is. Uh, I don't know what they can do to put themselves together here for the next game to where they can feel fresh, they can feel reinvigorated to make shots, make their open shots. I know playing Brooklyn is going to make it a little easier because Brooklyn is struggling. Then you got to go to Toronto, though, and do that. And then, of course, finish off with Washington. Uh, I, you just never know with with road games that are that mundane but i think i think i'm pretty confident that they can take it up i think i'm confident they can win these games have a five and one road trip which would be a massive win that's what i'm looking at right now uh, until i see something where there's a complete collapse uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna roll with that so let me ask you this though i mean the team three games into the six game trip or already looking tired 
what can they do differently to avoid any bad losses uh, as far as the rest of the road trip? Because they are going to be favored to win the next three games. They should win the next three games. The thing is, now that they're looking tired now, what can they do to try at least regain some of that energy for the next three games after that? They can't shoot like they shot tonight. However, if they did, Brooklyn, Toronto, and Washington aren't necessarily a high-scoring offensive team, or they're not high-scoring offensive teams. However, if they played a little bit better than they did tonight, I believe they can win all three of those games. The question will be, will one of these games be a dead game? Will they play like they played tonight? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. I don't know. It's, it's you know, the, the, the schedule is set up to combat things like this. That's why losses in November and December are, import, are just as important wins, I should say. Because if you don't lose games you should win early in the season against bad teams, it's these kind of losses that end up biting you in the rear end. Because now you're sitting there and you're going, well, Indiana, this, you know. Indiana loss wouldn't matter if they had won five of their games that they should have won in December. Or in beginning of January. It would have it would have made things much easier. Your seating would have been good. LeBron and I'm I don't I'm not gonna buy into the fact that they're they needed to punt games during that time. It, it, you needed to win at the beginning of the year when you're at your freshest. It's now when you have to start getting to the realization that shoot now, okay, we got we got ourselves in a position where we can be uh, in the playoffs without having to deal with another game or two. See, the, the problem here is look at look how this works out. That stuff is now going to add another two games to the slate of games you're already tired at. And now what if you have a bad game in one of those games? You have one bad game in the plan. It's over. I would rather have them played and had an injury trying to make it versus pussyfooting around and saying, well, let's just get in. And then, well, you're not in. You're in the West. There is no in. You, you The 11th seed has a winning record. Because I mentioned yesterday regards to the comments that both LeBron and the team have made in regarding being strategic about there how is no they go strategy. Out. See, this is the problem with LeBron James. I, I I I feel like I have to continue to repeat my prioritizing health over there season. is no prioritizing. You're not in a position to prioritize shit. And if you wanted to prioritize, how about prioritizing wins against San Antonio? In December, wins against Chicago, who played like dirt at that time. Miami, the same way. Memphis, the same way. Prioritize those wins, and you don't worry about now. The thing is, it's not a LeBron James thing. It's just we're talking about LeBron because this is a Lakers show, and he says it, and he becomes. When I get frustrated with LeBron, it's not really LeBron. It's people like LeBron who talk like this that drive me nuts. I sit there and I stand there and listen to people talk every day. And I'm like, do you guys really buy into your bullshit? Like, I'm standing there. I already know they're full of crap. And they're so delusional in what they're saying. We're trying to prioritize. Prioritize what? What are you doing? You're playing two more games, prioritizing. You're already dead right now. You needed to prioritize in December. You win five of those games that you lost that you shouldn't have lost. You wouldn't have to prioritize now. It's just, it's just words to just say words. They have no substance. They have no backing. A lot of it is made up. Most of the time when people talk, it's made up garbage to deflect anything negative towards them and so that they sound intelligent or they have this plan. No, there is no plan. Your plan is that you 
are not organized. You weren't thinking about this stuff in December. You're not prepared and understanding who you're playing, where you're playing, how this is likely going to play out. If you didn't think the West was going to be this strict, then you don't know what the hell world you're in. If I know, Gerald knows, people who are watching the show know, how the hell does LeBron James not know? He's in the NBA. How does Darwin Ham not know? He's an NBA coach. Prioritize. Come on. Really? If if I had an employee tell me that, and by the way, I, I, I don't really I have like one, two, three employees. I don't have like a, a grip of employees because most people are useless because they think like this. This isn't just a LeBron James thing. People in general, rich, poor, middle class, it doesn't matter what it is. They will believe something in their head, and then they'll regurgitate it. It's just that there's a few of us out there like myself who will actually stand there and go, what? How does that make any sense? I have friends of mine who will say, I'm confused. I always laugh at that that word. Basically, it's code for you're full of shit when they say I'm confused, right? Yes. I don't know. Wait, wait. You said prioritize. I don't, I'm, I'm, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm kind of confused. As soon as I hear confused from one of my friends who's like me when I, when I hear when they hear that, I know right away that this, this discussion is going to go south. There is no prioritizing. If you were prioritizing the correct way, you would have prioritized much earlier so that you could not, so you can avoid having this much pressure towards the end of the season. The pressure right now isn't as bad as it's going to be in about two weeks. Because you cannot lose. It's one and done. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, though. The thing I want to go ahead and point out is I think today was a prime example of why you need a consistent number three, Joe. Because with LeBron ailing today as far as fatigue, tired, whatever you want to say, AD had... I, the numbers won't say it, but AD just had like, a, he was there. He was there, did okay, but there were times where he just wasn't handling the ball in the first half. But this is the time you do need a number three to stand up. And Austin Reeves, you know, God bless him. He tried to give you the effort in that first half, diving all over the floor, doing what he can to try and keep the Lakers into it. But you saw with him and D'Lo, 10 for 30 overall for the game, just how important it is to have a number three that can step up when you need it the most, Joe. Unfortunately, the NBA is too strict with its new system where a third star is going to debilitate your team in terms of depth. The Lakers are, unfortunately, they're, they're, they don't have any depth and they don't even have a third star. I would like... I would prefer to have two and a half stars. God rest, God rest his soul, Ed McMahon. Two and, a half, two and a half stars. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Star Search, look it up. It was the original American Idol type show. Um, two and a half stars at two of the positions and then, a, and then maybe a, a, a perfect role player. Maybe that might be it. But then I don't know if you're going to have a six, seven, eight guy unless you draft well and you pick up somebody that's really valuable with the MLE. <laughs> so the issue here, if you look back, we botched the draft. We botched the minimum, the, the one salary that we could spend to get an effective player and pay him a decent salary. So you're already behind two there. Then you lost your probably number one perimeter defender in Jared Vanderbilt. And then you had some injury issues with Rui. And D'Angelo and Reeves did not really necessarily start this, the year all the way through. Or I should say as effective as they've been. So there was too much stuff. Plus, Darvin Ham didn't know how to set up his rotations. He was playing Torian Prince too much. Most of the season, when he probably should have started, Rui. It's just, it's just again, we 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 said fractured team, 
it's it's been a fractured team. Now they've sort of put themselves together a little bit the last few weeks, but it's too late. It's too late. They can't guarantee themselves that seven eight spot. Uh, they're likely going to probably stay in the nine because other teams that they're playing are going to continue to win. I don't see how, other than Phoenix, they're going to the Dallas and the Sacramento's are going to continue to win. Uh, the Warriors won today. Houston's becoming a threat now. Yeah, you just don't know. You don't know. Lakers could win three in a row, but then if <clears throat> Dallas wins two of three, okay, you gain one game. Big deal. You're still down three. You're still down four, and you don't have the tiebreaker. The Lakers are likely going to sit at the ninth. They're That's going to sit sad, at the ninth. But the sad part is, Joe, that Suns are getting destroyed right now in Oklahoma City without SGA. Really a missed opportunity for the it Lakers. It was. It was. They could have allowed themselves to have one less. And this is not because of tonight. Tonight's game is normal. Tonight's game is what happens during an NBA season. The reason why it's bad today, or I should say worse, is because they weren't able to take advantage of games they should have won back in December. Again, this team has no ex- – they have no room to punt games. They never had room, not even a, 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 a game throughout this year. They never had that luxury. They don't have that kind of team to say, ah, it's okay, we lost to Chicago in the middle of December. We'll make it up on in January when we have a six-game homestand. We'll win five out of one or six. Or six. You know, they don't, they don't have that kind of team. So every game was important. But this is where the Lakers are. Let's see if they can finish this road trip with three really bad teams with three wins. If they do that and we get lucky and some of these teams lose two in that time frame, like one, two, three in a row, then we might be having a different conversation. Lakers have to prioritize Mr. LeBron James trying to get out of that ninth seed. I trust you to win one. I believe you guys can win one and be fine. Problem is, can you win two? Two is pushing it, guys. Especially if you're gonna play Steph Curry. If if if, if it's Gold State at the ten, if Steph Curry goes nuts, is it is it out of the realm of possibility? What if Steph Curry goes nuts, drops fifty? You're gone. You're not even a playoff team after all this. You didn't make the playoffs. The play-in is not the playoffs. You are now a lottery team. A lottery team that might not have their pick. It gets worse the more this goes south. But I will say, though, it is going to be something that we're going to have to look into with the Lakers. And again, Three very critical games. As I was saying, Joe is fading away into the darkness with that background. <laughs> the Punisher is eating you alive. <laughs> Once again, it is the Lakers' fast break. The Lakers do lose 109 to 90. There you go. A little bit, a little bit more sunshine here. It's that left side of that background that's getting you, Joe, as far as the yeah, a lot better right there for you. A lot better. But it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Soro, aka. The guy behind Simblade, Simblades with a Y.com and Oxide247 at LakersBall.com. And me, Gerald Glassford, thanks so much again for watching this. And don't forget tonight at 8 30, share a nightcap with Joe Soro this evening at 8 30. Plus, also as well, tomorrow at noon, the Laker Holics crew of Jamie Sweet and Laker Tom will be back. They'll be here at noon tomorrow to go ahead and talk about all things Lakers at Lakerholic Spotlight for Lakers weekend as well. So, Joe, again, the fight continues, but the Lakers do need to finish the homestand strong. So you're not concerned at all, even with three lousy teams on the schedule, they might slip up because of what you saw tonight. We saw we thought that the Lakers might have trouble tonight. That's not in question. But the question was, they're looking so fatigued. That's what gets me concerned as they head out for the next three games, especially with a back-to-back as well. Well, it's safe to say they played terrible tonight, right? Yes. Okay. They played terrible, but that that they were sort of still in it because Indiana didn't play as well as they usually do, at least on offense. 
Now, none of these teams that we're playing next can do anything close to what Indiana does on offense. If they play this bad, they still can can win. If they play a little bit better, I don't see how they'll lose. They'd have to botch. They'd have to they'd have to do what they did tonight, honestly. And Indiana, uh, I'm sorry, Brooklyn, Toronto, and and Washington would have to do what Indiana did. I agree. It's just it's just what it is. I don't know what Brooklyn Toronto or, or Washington can do. Their, their their rosters are depleted. They have a they have a walking they have a breathing mummy on the on the on the bench that has quit. The biggest bitch quitter I've ever seen in NBA history in Ben Simmons. And then you have Toronto, Messiah Jury, you know, probably still looks at his the banner that Popovich gave him. And I don't know what the hell he's doing up there. And then Washington, I don't even know what Washington is. I don't know. I don't, I don't recognize basketball in Washington anymore. I think they just collect tickets, collect concessions and go on their yachts and go to Cape Cod or whatever the hell they do over there on the East coast. I do want to mention that Minnesota is leading big in the second quarter on the road at Denver. It's the second game in a row. Jamal Murray has been sat down with a vital contender in the Western Conference that they're playing against. Surprised that Jamal Murray is sitting down these important games where Denver, with a couple of those victories, could have locked down the first seed in the Western Conference? So there, there's the team that doesn't matter, especially who they're battling for the one seed. You think Denver's worried about Oklahoma City? Should they meet him in the Western Conference Finals? The question is, will Oklahoma City make it to the Western Conference Finals as a one seed? Will Minnesota? That's a 50-50. I'm not going to say either or. Denver has nothing to worry about in terms of seeding at this point. They can win anywhere with, against anyone in the West. What they have to make sure of, and this is something Laker fans need to be very, very focused on as well. We know that the Lakers are not going to win a championship this year. But my God, we need Denver to win it. Because I don't know what the hell's going on in the East. The yes. Celtics get a clean path to the Eastern Conference Finals and then win it. Denver needs to be there and Jamal Murray needs to be healthy. If he is... Denver is going to win back-to-back -back championships. And the Lakers, Laker Nation need it. Because this season cannot get worse. It cannot be Lakers losing the play-in, not make the playoffs, then lose their draft pick because it's a lottery pick, and then also watch the, the Celtics win 18. It would be the worst season in at least in our generation. I'm sure losing to the Celtics in the 60s, was absolutely horrific for, for Laker Nation. I'm just glad I was born in the late 70s. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I will say that, again, all important three games for the Lakers to finish up strong because now on the horizon in the rearview mirror, they can see once again Golden State because Golden State has to keep winning themselves because they – have Houston in the rearview mirror. And so there are some out there saying that maybe the Lakers are in peril of getting beat by the Houston Rockets and falling completely out of the plan. Your thoughts, are you concerned at all? I'm not yet because the fact they do have those three uh, below 500 teams that they're going to be playing. I mean, Toronto had just coming off of a 12 game losing streak. The wizards are the wizards and Brooklyn they should be remembering what happened when they came here and waxed us at the crypt. So they should be remembering that if Ham has anything to do as far as motivating this team. So I'm not concerned yet, Joe, but it is on the horizon. It is on our rear view mirror. You're talking about Houston and Golden State. So Houston is not the team I want to play should they jump the Warriors. Yudoka seems to outcoach Ham worse than any other coach in the NBA. 
and Houston will have momentum. And the Lakers don't usually handle momentum well from the other team, this team, anyways. So it's getting it's getting it's getting a little interesting here. We're gonna have to figure out what's what what's gonna happen. Houston's won ten in a row, but Golden State's won three in a row. Uh, <laughs> if the if the Lakers weren't playing three bad teams right now, let's say if they were playing three playoff East teams, ooh, <laughs> oh man, we would have been worried about possibly getting out of the nine and ending up in eleven within three games. Imagine if okay. they lose three in a row, and then Golden State and Houston continue to win. It could be that quick. However. If this is what the standings are right now, 1-1, one, one, right? Houston's one behind the Warriors, Warriors one behind us. The issue is going to be looking at the schedule after the road trip. If they even out, Lakers have a tough schedule. It's Cleveland, it's Minnesota, and it's Golden State. Now, Golden State, there's a reciprocation there if they win. But that's still three really good teams. If they lose two out of those three, one being a Golden State, that's going to be very, very scary. And that whole sitting down for Memphis and New Orleans now changes everything. Now that changes. We don't know what those games are going to mean. And then that means more work for them to fly to Memphis. And, and then they have to go to New Orleans right after that a day later or two days later. It's just – it's it's a brutal end of a season where I don't believe – I seriously would be shocked if they actually thought about the repercussions of how this season was going to end. I seriously don't think Darvin Ham looked at the schedule and said, Jesus, six, another six game road trip at the end of the season. And then we got to play three really good teams. They were still going to be good teams at the beginning of the year, Cleveland, Minnesota, and Golden State. Golden State's struggling. I'm not saying they're a juggernaut, but they're still a danger. And then you have to go all the way to Memphis and then stay there and go to New Orleans two days later. That's that's why punting those games was stupid and ill-prepared, and I really don't think these guys ever put it – ever gave it any consideration that this – that those that, that the end of the season was a problem – and you needed to solve some of that early on. They just, I just don't think that's how they thought. Strategic. If LeBron had said strategic and, hey, we have to win these games because the, the schedule gets brutal at the end of the year, we have to make up a lot of – I'd be like, yeah, okay, good. LeBron looks like he's paying attention. But saying it strategic now, really, what's strategic – so that you can play two play-in games? Who the hell do you think you're fooling? Or maybe it's just he's saying it to the Mike Trudells and the Trevor Lanes and the studio at Sportsnet. Those guys are not going to challenge him with a, a logical retort. No one does. He's LeBron James. You do that once, he's going to cut you off. Right? That's what yes. people do these days. You get challenged. They go and they get into their feelings. They get into their feelings, and then all of a sudden, they they shun you, they censor you, because they don't want to be challenged when they're full of shit. Could be the case. Just because I like you, and I like LeBron James, I'm a I'm happy he's a Laker. It's a hell of a lot better than having Rob Sacre, Kelly. Uh, who else did we have in that monstrosity between 16, 17? But, uh, no, that was past the Smirsh Parker re regime. Way beyond. Um, yeah. That 2016, 2017. Oh my gosh. There was, I kind of like to block that out of my mind, but I know we had our share of, uh, so that was the re no so again, here. I want to make it clear. Luol Dang. I want to make it clear. He didn't really play though. I yeah. want to make it clear. I'm he was on the LeBron roster. He was still I'm, getting I'm, paid. <laughs> the, the LeBron being a Laker has been nothing but good because he at least we're, we're playing to win. 
Don't forget Lane. Tariq Black, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't care what, what if you say something that doesn't sound logical, you're gonna you're gonna hear it. I don't care if you're LeBron James, I don't care if you're the king of England. I don't care. You say something that doesn't make any sense, you need to be called out on it. Especially when you're in a leadership position. And that's it. Lakers are in a position right now where they have some breathing room here in terms of strength of schedule. You got to win these next three games and then be prepared to play three really, really tough games before you have to go on the last two games on the road. But we'll find out. It is, of course, the Lakers fast break. The Lakers do lose 109 to 90. The Lakers are still in ninth place, 41 and 33 in the Western Conference. Joe, what would you think is going to be the most likely scenario for the Lakers closing out the, what, final eight games of the season? Do you see five and three, six and two? Do you, do you see them get, let's say, let's say 47 wins, over under on 47 wins? By the I end. can see six and two if the uh, if they play, if LeBron and AD play the rest of the year. Okay. Six and two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just, I, I so think. So that would put them square at 47. And I'm still thinking it's going to be a nine seed with this 47 wins. Yeah. Even with uh, the tough schedule for Phoenix and the fact that Kevin Herter was announced as being done. Uh, for that that, that's, a, that's a bad one. Herter always hurts us. So, but are we going to get a chance to play Sacramento? I think the funny thing about that is I don't know. I don't really know. Will we get there? I don't think we, we know that yet. If Sacramento gets the sixth seed, we're never going to see Sacramento. Right now, the Lakers are likely going to see Houston or Golden State. Should they play to what we think they're going to play at? And they're going to have to win that first game, and then they're going to have to beat Phoenix, Sacramento, or Dallas. It's a tall order, guys. It's a tall order, especially if D'Angelo does not hit his shots. If D'Angelo doesn't hit his shots in any of those games, the Lakers are done. I agree. You can't. You saw what happens when he doesn't hit for you tonight. When him and Austin Reeves, Joe, are struggling so mightily from the outside, you saw them pack the paint. Indiana lost all respect for the Lakers because they could not hit consistently from the outside, hitting 16% of their three-pointers tonight. And just, to, you know, they were packing in. So LeBron had like three or four guys wrapping up at his arms every time he went to the basket. Yeah, that's 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 the game, man. You gotta gotta know who you're playing, man. You gotta figure out this is this is why you get paid the money to coach and why you get paid to play 82 games a year. But it just didn't work out, man. Didn't work out tonight, and I can't say I didn't see it. I just thought it'd be different. I thought if if they were gonna come in tired and playing against a team that's known for their offense that they'd get run out of the building. But Indiana actually, they actually gave them a shot in the first half and parts of the third. To they they, kept, they kept the Lakers in the game, no matter how bad the Lakers played. Oh, they yeah, were, yeah. They were terrible. They were missing shots. They I, I, Halliburton wasn't really his dominant self. Miles Turner was in foul trouble most of the game. They had every, they had every opportunity to go on a run, seven, eight, nine point lead, and then that might have carried them, because I don't know if Indiana would have, would have necessarily felt as comfortable as they did towards the end and ended up finally breaking it away. Nineteen. For those of you who didn't watch the game, a nineteen point uh, win. That game did not was not a nineteen point win in terms of its forty eight minutes. That 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 last. 12 points was just garbage time. Lakers pretty much had given up. 
I know this because Maxwell Lewis tried to attempt to shoot and got blocked, which honestly I feel like every time that guy shoots, it gets blocked. He is absolutely, without question, abhorrent at basketball. I don't know what the hell and where the hell they found that guy. And I love to, uh, you know, and, and we always hear, or at least we heard earlier in the season, but, the, you know, I know JHS is a bust, Gerald and Joe, but there's, you know, Maxwell Lewis has so much promise. His has what? so much promise from what? I didn't hear a thing about Maxwell Lewis anywhere. Now, I don't watch college basketball like I do the NBA, but I do hear things. And he's from Pepperdine, which means he's not too far from where I'm at. I didn't hear Jack squat about Maxwell Lewis. So I don't and know you paid thing. extra money for him and Christy. I don't have a clue why that was supposed to be some really cool. Is it because they're, they've are they been good at picking p- uh, players in the second round? What good is that, by the way? All this praise of picking guys in the second round when 90% of those guys you got rid of for nothing. And the and the ones you have now are and the ones you have now are trash. Yeah. So what's what exact what exactly did you do? That's like someone finding the right woman to marry, but then they go and ah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find the the lady on the corner. I'm not gonna go marry this perfect woman that can raise good kids and have a good home and safe home and be be committed. It, that's pretty much. You, you do all that work, you court, you research, you ask questions, all this for what? For what? So that you can trade them for Muscala? So that you can let them go in free agency? What? I don't, go, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Is that what they were thinking with Maxwell Lewis? Southern Comfort says... Joe, to be fair, Lewis and JHS have played much, probably because they can't play, but still, no Southern Comfort. By now, you've seen them enough in practice. You've seen them enough behind the scenes. They've worked out with the top guys already numerous times. You will see if they actually can play NBA-level ball by this time, Joe. It's not necessarily has to be in the games. There are so many players in the league who prove themselves in practice, in workouts, in, you know, behind the scenes and do something to earn at least a chance and opportunity. JHS and Maxwell Lewis have done nothing. Getting 30 points in the G League does nothing because everybody scores in the G League. Do it at the NBA level. Do it in the NBA practice. And obviously they haven't done anything to earn the coaches notice and respect to put them out on the floor. No development. Oh, that's a, that could be attributed to no it as development. well. They look like they don't know how to play basketball. It, basketball in this day and age is about scoring, right? Yes. Getting shots off. When I hear Rob Palinka in that, Back backstage Lakers thing. We know you work hard. Hmm. We know you work hard. What does working hard have to do with anything when you don't know how to play? I can go work hard. If you if Rob Palinka came right now and said, Joe, I need you to be 200 pounds, work hard, and you'll make the team. I'll be 200 pounds in two to three months, and I will work hard. Does that mean I'm going to be able to play in the NBA? Capital F, no. So spare me your work hard garbage. Talent. Talent. Like in any business is the only thing that matters. There's a talent to be respectful to. And working hard too. I'm not saying you don't have to work, don't have to work hard. I'm saying talent has to be first. When you have the talent, then you see if they want to work for it too. Best player available. The Lakers had gone best player available. The Lakers would have had a 
player that they desperately needed, especially this year. Cam Whitmore, Triple J, Podziemski, Trace Jackson Davis, Gigi Jackson, all were All available. those guys, besides Cam Whitmore, you don't really know at the time. Hindsight's 2020, but we goddamn knew Cam Whitmore was a baller. I have never seen a player that talented drop that low. That happens only in the NFL because the NFL has 22 players on each side of the ball. They have special teams. They can risk doing things like that where they let guys drop. I don't want to deal with it. I'll go pick a, I'll go pick a, a left tackle in the third round. There's plenty of players in the history of the NFL that have picked left tackles in the third round and became Hall of Famers or became Pro Bowlers. Okay, In the NFL, in the NBA, you cannot do that. Talent is limited. And I mean, like, next level talent. You take a chance at that number. If it doesn't work out, you tip your hat to it. Hey, look, we got the best player available. If it didn't work out, it's not our fault. But I'm not going to keep harping on that. The point is, there's bad decisions being made. And when I hear the word prioritize, it, it, it makes my, my ears itch because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. What do you mean prioritize? Stop acting like you're smart, LeBron James. Okay? You're not smart. You're a basketball player. You do that very well. Stop acting like this was planned. Because if it really was planned like this, then you aren't smart. Just say it. You think that's smart to prioritize? Well, how bad? Let me put this uh, as far as before we head on out onto your lap here is how bad has it hurt the organization this year by missing on not one, but both draft choices and missing? It hurt them, it hurt them, it hurt them depth wise, which means they probably lost. You could say honestly that they've lost four to five games because of it. Imagine if you had someone like Cam Whitmore or Triple J coming off that bench and scoring those 12, 15 points off the bench in five in those five games. You win those games. You can't really, I mean, you'd have to do some next level research, right? I don't have that. I don't I wish I wish I had time for that, but I don't. But common sense says if you had one or two guys off the bench that actually played consistent all throughout and you didn't have to allocate 20, 30 million dollars for those players, would you say Cam Whitmer's a better player than Torian Prince? Would you say he's a better player than Max Christie? How about Jackson Hayes? How about Spencer Dinwiddie? The answer is yes. So how much better now is your team if you had had a better player there? Not only that, for the price that he would be paid. I'm not yeah. expecting a second-round pick to make a difference. I'm just saying Maxwell Lewis doesn't know how to play basketball in the NBA because that's what I've seen. I don't see – you don't see people play that bad, even second-rounders typically. He's not good at all. Like since summer league, he was terrible. I remember three, not one, not two, but three games for Maxwell Lewis where he got a donut in the summer league. Yes, we we were there. That's we hard are, to do. We've watched every Laker game since the draft, even summer league, all of us. So... We, I, I would like to think we have a good assessment on this, or are we being obtuse? Oh, there you go. Big word of the day. Uh, Ace Nubian says, Joe, I think you're being too harsh on LeBron. LeBron James is smart. The problem is his ego. Well, if you let your ego trump your thought process, that makes you not smart. And Mookie Betts hits another home run. Thank you. <laughs> so funny joe i was playing i was telling everybody on playback i played last night on the xbox um nba 2k24 and then right back uh back to back with mlb the show and to me it's no contest the presentation on the show is outstanding the 2k24 it's like okay we wanted to do all this stuff but it's all jittery and it just doesn't work out quite as well uh but the thing is 
The Dodgers, I played, the, I had the Dodgers play the Angels. Mookie Betts hits a home run. Will Smith hits two home runs. Like 19 hits later against th- a three hitter. Uh, Otani threw a three hitter and they won 10 to one. So there you go as far as your scoreboard between the Dodgers and the Angels this year. And it was just played it out. I just played it out based off of their talents. So you can tell. Uh, you know, they're going to have a good season, but for the Lakers to have a good season, as again, they lose tonight, 109 to 90, they do need to finish the season strong and make sure they stave off the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets. You don't seem too concerned about Golden State and Houston right there be in their rear room era. Not, pe- not only because they're playing three really bad teams next. If they win out, then they're probably in good shape to to finish the season in front of those teams. Now, if they go, if they lose two of the next three games, then we're in trouble. Lakers are in big trouble. They couldn't actually get out of the play on top of that. Because what does Houston have to lose? Why would they stop playing well? Why would they start losing? Golden State, you have you have a you have the greatest shooter in NBA history on your team, even though their team is lousy, and. You, you always have a shot. Uh, 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 uh. I dug that one out. <laughs> By the way, I think the creep factor with you in the shadows is intentional, everyone out there. So in the comments, you're going to say, well, what's up with this Look guy? Bright. This Look how bright this is. That's all you need to see. Who's the guy in the shadows? What's he saying? The guy, the guy in the shadows, make this comment about LeBron. Uh, LeBron's not a super. Yeah, that's, that's what you I, say, I'm say, Look, that. guys, it's not a LeBron thing. He's gonna, you people are going to say you're. People are going to say you're a LeBron hater. If you and were then my LeBron friend support. and you said something stupid like that, I'd do the same thing. Matter of fact, matter of fact, it'd be worse. I'm like, what do you mean strategic? What the hell does that even mean? Ooh, we're prioritizing we're health strategizing over... how to set ourselves up for the ninth seed. Yes, prioritizing really? health over health seeding. over what? You're gonna uh, you're prioritizing playing more games. How is that helping your health? Tell me, explain it to me, like I'm a six year old, as Denzel Washington would say in the movie Philadelphia. Go ahead. Now, Go ahead. Tell me. I was just going to say, cool, bro. Now he really does look like a Sith Lord. With <laughs> the shadows. I, I, I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Tell me. Make me understand. Because you know where I'm just going to get in the comments, Joe. Half the audience is going to say you're a LeBron hater. And the other half is going to say you're a LeBron stan. I get it all the time. Yeah, I, I was called a, a Democrat and a Republican one time in the same day, which was actually pretty good because that basically tells you that it's all perspective. It's your thoughts, folks, telling you that, not logic. Your thoughts are telling you that's what's what's being said. Logic says something different. Logic says what Joe is asking a question about Someone saying something about strategy for health, yet that strategy is going to make you play more games. Hmm. Hmm. We don't care about our seedings, right? He said that, right? Yeah. We don't really care about the seedings. You don't have a seed. You don't have a seed. You're a ninth seed. A seed is one through six right now. You don't have a seed. You don't have a playoff spot. You are a bad game in two weeks from not making the playoffs. Making $50 million a year and have an AD next to you. And you guys played all year. You guys didn't get any major injuries. And you had, you have the best three-point shooting team in the month of March, or at least it was before tonight's game. 
Tell me I'm being unreasonable based off of statistics, based off of the fact that we've watched how many games? 74 games and preseason and summer league and international basketball watching one of our guys play. What more do you guys want us to, to do to give you guys credibility that we know what the F we're talking about? What more do we need to do? Do we need to have season tickets and go in the locker room? Do we need to watch every game on replay after we're done watching it the first time? What is it? I'm going by what they're saying. I'm going by what LeBron says. LeBron likes to talk, folks. You ever notice that Anthony Davis doesn't say stuff like this? You never hear Austin Reese say no. stuff like this. Why is LeBron saying it? But Anthony Davis did say something very profound in saying that the way we lost today was a wasted opportunity. He Thanks. gets it, Joe. You see? And what did we say about Anthony? What have I said about Anthony Davis? I love Anthony Davis. He's smart. He gets it. He's cerebral. The thing is, he's 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 a team player. He doesn't cross the lines. He doesn't call anybody out. And that could be a good thing and a bad thing, depending on where you're at. Of course, if you talk to somebody like Kobe and Jordan, it's not good. If you talk to somebody like LeBron and, and Steph Curry, had, even Steph Curry broke the other night, but he kept it within himself. If the camera wasn't on him, probably wouldn't have known about it. After Draymond did his uh, uh, Bob Backlund, uh, what was that, chicken wing move? Yes, the Bob right? Backlund. He did the chicken wing. Yeah, yeah. he was doing that to, uh, what's his name? Which um, he did it to a lot. Oh, Bret Hart? No, I was talking about uh, Draymond Green. Oh, Draymond Green to, okay, when he did it to Patty Mills the other Patty day. Patty Mills. He, he even finally had reached his limit. He had to put his freaking jersey over his face. He didn't know what else to do with himself. <laughs> and then the next night, he gets thrown out in four minutes. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, Steph Curry's trying to do everything he can to figure something out, to make something of this season and not waste it. and. Here's this clown. Unfortunately, he has to live with it because he's the one that, that, that initiated it. It is what it is. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. The Lakers do lose 109 to 90. Coming up in about an hour, it's Joe Soros, Lakers nightcap. Uh, Joe, what do you have on tap tonight from the shadows? With Lakers nightcap. Well, the shadow right now is just for fun because of the uh oh, the background. I'm I'm yes. not gonna be in the dark. I can't wait for the comments on that, by the way. I'm not gonna be in the dark. Uh we we like to change things up here on the show so it's not mundane and basic. Uh for those of you who, who don't like it, uh sorry. <laughs> the, <laughs> Sith, the Sith Lord will do as he wishes. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm more of a. I'm Star Wars is great. I wouldn't mind playing a Sith Lord in the movie, but uh, if there was a role that I was born to play, it would have been this guy right here. I can relate to this more than uh, any other character in in the comic book world. I could tell. I could tell indeed, but. Anything going on for tonight as far as the nightcap is concerned? I'll have some drinks. I'll have some drinks. I don't know if I'll go back to the wine yet. I'll think about it. But we'll we'll have some drinks tonight. We'll shoot the you-know-what. I'll be watching the Dodger game here. I'm sure we'll, we'll throw in some Dodger comments. Uh, talk more about the game. For those of you for those of you who miss this show, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate some things on the nightcap, and we'll enjoy the night and go from there. Once again, it is Lakers nightcap with Joe Soro. Please check it out. This evening, coming up in about an hour, right here on the Lakers Fast Break. Again, the Lakers lose 109 to 90. Also, remember the Laker Holics crew is back on Saturday at noon, talking about what's going on with the road trip and can the Lakers get it done. Lakers Tom streams are dashed with tonight's loss. What how how will he recover? So go ahead and find out how he will recover for tomorrow's Lakerholic Spotlight on Lakers Weekend. It's part of our coverage right here at the Lakers Fast Break. So for Joe Sorrell, who will be here back in one hour, it's Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much again for watching listening. Truly appreciate it. The Lakers do lose 109-90. to We'll be back 
again here a little bit with Lakers Night Cap with Joe Soro tomorrow with the Laker Holic Spotlight and Sunday, a full day of coverage as the Lakers head into Brooklyn. And we'll be talking about it right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Thank you.